What is up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist and I'm back to bring you 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. Today, we're talking about Uriel Ventris, or how I like to call him, Uriel Ventris. Now this guy is pretty OG, since he likes to work outside of the confines of the Codex Astartes, which is basically taboo for the Ultramarines. But anyway, he's got a lot of lore, and I do want to apologize because I said we were going to cover Ventris, in an episode about a year ago and lo and behold it didn't happen <laughs> which is why we got his lore today and like I said he has tons of lore uh, so there might be like a part two to this uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure I may just uh, you know cover the important parts to Ventress's storyline but we'll see what happens anyway guys let's dive into this ultramarines lore Uriel Ventris became captain of the 4th Company of the Ultramarines chapter, once one of the 20 original Space Marine Legions of the first founding, when its former captain, Idaeus, sacrificed himself during the Battle of Thracia in a desperate latch-ditch attempt to stop a Night Lord's Chaos Marine offensive. Despite his initial disquiet at Idaeus' unorthodox method, Ventris saw merit within them, and in time he would become just as unconventional as his mentor was. Now Ventris's first mission was on Pavonis, which was a deeply troubled imperial industrial world on the eastern fringes of the Imperium of Man. He was tasked with escorting an adept of the Administratum, Ario Barazano who was later revealed to be an inquisitor of the Ordo Xenos in disguise, and he was ensuring his safety as the adept attempted to restore order to an increasingly troubled and incompetent planetary government led by Governor Shonai. The troubles came from both humans and Xenos alike. The Church of Ancient Ways, a secret and heretical organization, had plagued the planet by planting bombs in the world's manufactorums. In addition to this, a series of raids by the Dark Eldar had been going on for six years. However, Ventress successfully handled both problems, defeating all civil insurrection by disgruntled Pavonis nobles and crushing the Dark Eldar and their human collaborator in the tomb of the Catan known as the Nightbringer. Unfortunately for all the intelligent races of the galaxy, the Nightbringer escaped into the cosmos. Now this is basically just a quick summary of his works. Or, or his first mission, that is. Um, it can be found in novels and whatnot. So I greatly recommend you guys go to the Black Library and scour the world of the novels of Ario Ventris. Really, really good. So, uh, yeah, if you don't want to get spoiled, I, just, I guess spoiler warning, <laughs> even though it's kind of too late. But uh, like I said, that's just like ba barely scratching the whole, you know, Ventress novels. But anyway, guys, let's continue on with this lore. Now sworn to honor an ancient oath pledged by Robute Gilliman to defend the people of Tarsus Ultra, Ventris, which was on orders from Lord Calgar, enlisted in the aid of a company from the Mortificactors chapter, which was being led by Chaplain Astador. Upon arriving on this planet, the Space Marines were further supported by the 10th Logress Regiment, which was being led by Colonel Octavius of the 933rd Death Corps of Cree led by Colonel Tremon Stalgar, and also the PDF regiments headed by Major Ares Satria. Now Lord Inquisitor Krippman was also present to impart his extensive knowledge on the Tyranids to help the war effort, along with a Death Watch kill team led by Captain Bannon. Damn, that's a lot of people. <laughs> so when the Tyranids arrived in the system and consumed the planet Barbarous Prime, the Imperials launched an attack in space. Despite an initial victory in destroying a hive ship, Inquisitor Krippman wished to invoke Exterbonatus upon the next world in the Tyranid's path, Cordellus, to prevent it from being devoured and swelling the Tyranid's numbers, as planetary evacuation was way too slow. Ventress was vehemently against this decision and supported an alternate solution proposed by Lord Admiral Lazio Tiberius to slow down the Tyranids by exploding a hydrogen plasma refinery in space to destroy yet another hive ship. However, Krippman lied to Ventress, and with the assistance of the Mortificators, invoked Exterminatus in spite of the Ultramarine's plan of succeeding. The Imperials attempted the same trick again with a second space refinery to destroy yet another hive ship, 
However, the Tyranids adapted to this ploy, and the plan backfired on the Imperials, crippling their fleet and forcing the survivors to flee. Tarsus Ultra was then left unprotected from space, which allowed the Tyranids to launch their long-dreaded planetary invasion. Now during this Tyranid attack on Tarsus Ultra, Ventress found himself haunted by his experiences with the Gatan, the Nightbringer. He managed to move on following spiritual advice from Sister Joniel of the Order Hospiter during prayer in the medical chapter. Now Ventress assisted Captain Bannon and his team in capturing a lictor, which proved pivotal during the war, as Kripman's Magos biologist's aide, Vinaco Locard, was able to conduct venom from the lictor's genetic structure that would send an early generation of Tyranid into hyperevolution, thus killing the creature. Unfortunately, the only way to utilize this venom was to board the last remaining hive ship in orbit and infect the Tyranid Norn Queen. Out of respect for Captain Bannon, who had died in an earlier mission in destroying a hive ship, Ventress assumed command of the Death Watch team before its boarding mission. This was in breach of the Codex Astartes, when Ventress succeeded command of his men and the planet to his senior sergeant, Lerchus Abnatus. Now Ventress, Passanius, and the Death Watch team managed to finally kill the last Norn Queen with the aid of Kripman's gene poison. However, at the last moment, Ventress was poisoned by this queen, causing his entire bloodstream to clot within his body. He would have died for it not been a blood transfusion contributed by Passanius, which kept him alive until they got him to medical care on Tarsus Ultra. The remaining Space Marine contingent of both the Ultramarines and the Mortifactors were down to 16 men when the Tyranids started to attack each other, as the link with the hive mind was lost when the last Norn Queen died. This psychic shockwave of the Overmind's death affected the Tyranids into slaughtering each other senselessly, leaving the Imperials alone. The majority froze to death under the harsh conditions of Tarsus Ultra, with the minority surviving and taking refuge in warmer surroundings. At the conclusion of this war, Ventrance reaffirmed his faith as an Ultramarine to protect the Imperium from the enemies of mankind. Now despite Ventrance's sincere belief that his actions had been indeed correct, Lerchus reported his and Passanius' breaches of the Codex to Chapter Command and Ventrans and Passanius were both arrested and placed on trial. Based on some discreet advice from Lord Calgar, Ventrus and Passanius waived their rights to defend themselves, as to prevent their example from being followed by others, causing further anarchy within the Ultramarines. So instead of death, their punishment was to be bound to a death oath and exile from the chapter. All insignia of the Ultramarines, which included the symbol of their shoulder guards, were removed. Upon leaving the fortress of Hera to embark on the March of Shame, they were commanded by Calgar to seek and destroy demonic womb creatures, the Demina Culaba, which were seen in a vision by Chief Librarian Varro Tigurius. Ventress and Passanius left McCrag on a vessel, and as the Imperial Guard Regiment aboard, the McCrag 808th were bound to fight against the 13th Black Crusade in the Segmentum Obscurus. Now this seems like a good place to cut off part 1 to his lore. Now there's going to be some, I think a, at least part 2, maybe a part 3, because there's a lot of lore on this guy. If you want to learn a little bit more about Ventress, you can go to our 40 facts on the demon Makar. Because he does play a pretty integral part in Ventress's lore. So uh, there you go guys. Also, let me know what other character you guys want some 40 facts on. Uh, I've been covering a lot of the Ultramarines lately with the whole hype with uh, Gilman returning and whatnot, which was actually last year, so I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this whole video has been just weird, guys. I don't know. I think I uh, drank a little too much uh, Merlot. But anyway, let me know what you guys think, and uh, I'll continue the lore tomorrow. As always, we do have a Patreon, so support us there if you'd like. If not, it's cool. You can head over to our Facebook page, which we've got uh, some posts that we post every single day. So check it out. And on top of that, we have a Twitter and an Instagram. So more 40K stuff there. Like I said, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. And this has been the Sound Alchemist, who has drunk too much Merlot, ready to knock out.
Oh, <laughs> oh,